All right. Okay, so here this is a uh, an Excel spreadsheet with um, data for stress versus number of uh, number of cycles. So here I just put in the number of cycles. So I've just sort of chosen numbers that sort of slowly increase, and then when I get to one million, I sort of go by um, by uh, by millions. Um, and then this equation, 1466 uh, times 2 times A2 is the number of cycles to the power of minus 1.43. So these these constants came from a, uh, a textbook that had data for 70, 75 aluminium, which is what the um, the upright is uh, is made from. So in the engineering data. So here I've got my aluminium alloy, so I've just renamed this. So here there's an alternating stress uh, versus number of cycles. And then it's for a, a ratio of zero because that's what the constants were based on. So here if I change this to a, a logarithmic, so you can basically see it's a straight, uh, a straight line. Okay, so if I look at structural steel, so this does have uh, properties, but you can see they're quite uh, quite unrealistic. So, uh, so normally around ten cycles, that should be closer, more closer to the uh, to the ultimate strength of the uh, of the material. So this is just here as a, a template to give you a, a, an idea of what sort of format it's looking for. A lot of the time, these properties aren't really uh, aren't really meaningful. Okay, so if we go into the uh, into the model, okay, so if we look at the uh, the loads that we've got uh, got applied. So here I've got a, a remote displacement. So this is basically a um, a spherical uh, a spherical joint. Um, so here in the components x y z displacements are fixed, and then displacements are, uh, are free. Uh, at the bottom. So X and Y displacements are free, are fixed, sorry, and uh, everything else is free. So there's, it's free to sort of slide in the, in the Z direction. And then in the, where the steering arm goes, or the tow link, if this is on the rear, um, that's, uh, just fixed in the uh, in the y direction, and then everything else is uh, is free. Okay, and then we've basically got uh, bearing loads. So because this is coming from cornering, it's uh, these are basically reactions to the uh, the the load at the tire contact patch, and then there's also a um, a thrust reaction force on uh, on there as well, because uh, that's coming again from the uh, from the cornering. So it's basically taking the cornering thrust, and that's reacting there on the uh, on the upright. So if we look at the equivalent stress, let's so maybe make our limit one seven five. So you can see that there's sort of high stresses uh, around the around the middle there, and then there's a a hole there probably for um, might be for putting a grease nipple or something on there. Okay, so if we look at the fatigue tool, so here what are we saying? Okay, so 
we'll basically redo this. So if I insert fatigue tool, so here I'm going to tell it what type I want. So here I'm going to say zero based. So this picture here is basically a picture of the scale factor of the loads that it's going to apply when it's doing the fatigue calculation. Okay, so we're going to do stress life because we're looking at high cycle fatigue, not strain life, which is for low cycle fatigue. So mean stress theory. So I'm going to use uh, Goodman. So if any of you have done uh, any uh, engineering design subjects, you'll be familiar with um, the Goodman theory for mean stress. So it's basically based off, um, or if, in a fatigue sense, tensile stresses, uh, because fatigue is all about cracks, tensile stresses help to open cracks up more easily. So this amplifies the, um, the, the alternating stress based off the, um, the uh, ultimate stress. So if you do uh, Soderberg, it's based off the, uh, the yield, uh, yield stress. So in general, Soderberg is for brittle materials. Goodman is for, um, uh, for ductile materials. So materials that fail more um, in, a, in a ductile way. All right, so here we can insert equivalent alternating stress and also the, uh, the life. So if we evaluate this fatigue tool, okay, so if we look at the equivalent alternating stress, so it is zero based, yep. Okay, so if we look at the, uh, the life, so a lot of it's above 5E6 with the exception of around this, uh, this hole. So it's probably because of the, the way the, uh, the mesh is. So if we look at the uh, equivalent alternating stress. So there's, if I probe around there, so it falls off very, uh, very quickly. So what we could do is we could, uh, let's actually do it, let's actually add a size control on that hole, insert. So 0.5 millimetres. Okay, it shouldn't take too long to solve. Mm, it's actually made it worse, okay. So what, what that's telling is that there's likely to be a, uh, a fatigue crack that might develop in that, uh, in that area. So in reality, there's probably going to be something screwed into that, uh, into that hole. So you have to sort of treat your results with a, uh, with a grain of salt. So you'd then go back in your second pass and actually include the part that's screwed in there if you were really concerned about it getting a, a fatigue failure in there. All right, so let's, there's another load case with a, uh, a breaking force in here. So it's a bit hard to see, let me, okay. So here this again would be a case of a, uh, a zero based load because you're most likely going to be applying the brakes with the car moving in the same direction all the time or that's going to be the dominant, um, dominant direction that it's going in. Okay, so here if we probe where the, or here really we're after the uh, the minimum life, so. Okay, 
So it's probably coming about because of the because uh, of the mesh, because there's a small uh, small element there. So you've just got to be uh, be a bit careful with uh, how you interpret your uh, your results uh, sometimes. Okay, so that concludes the uh, the demonstration. So.